All right, class, pop quiz. What are the organs that make up your digestive system? Go. Ooh, stomach, large intestine. Pancreas, the bacteria in your gut. Get out of here, that's not an organ. Okay, what makes something an organ then? Glad you asked that. An organ is a collection of different cells that all work together to serve a common function. Huh. Now I'm not saying that your textbook's wrong, but put a book down, this is science with toes. Science with toes. So the bacteria in your gut aren't just essential for digestion. They seem to affect allergies, obesity, and maybe even mate preference. Figure out how these microscopic heroes interact with so many different body systems. I spoke to microbiologist John Lynch. Unlike episode two, which was all about what happens when cells go rogue, I talked to John about what happens when cells cooperate. Which all starts with a little thing we like to call tissues. Tissues. So can you explain to me what a tissue is? Yeah, so basically a tissue is a group of cells that are pretty close related, so they act kind of similarly. They work together and do something a little more complicated than each of the individual cells can do. And would like a given organ have multiple tissues? Organs are collections of different types of tissues all working together to do something even more complicated. So for example, like the heart has muscle tissue that helps actually do the pumping so it can pump blood. It has nervous well, tissue, so well, nerves actually tell the heart when it should contract and how it should contract. And you have stuff like connective tissue that actually holds the heart together, holds it in the right place in your chest, and those things all have to work together for the heart to be able to function like it should be functioning. So our levels of organization, we got cells, make up tissues, make up organs, mm -hmm. and then what, what comes after organs? Things like your circulatory system, which isn't just restricted to just your heart, it actually goes over your entire body and does something even more complicated than the heart itself could do. Can you give me like a ev evidence that these systems actually are talking to each other? Let's say I take a piece of broccoli. I can take the carbon in that broccoli and make it radioactively labeled. It's just kind of a way that we can trace the molecules in that broccoli and see where they go. So I have my radio labeled broccoli. Yeah. I eat it because I love broccoli. Mm -hmm. It goes in my digestive system. I break it down. The carbon from the broccoli that I've radio labeled again gets passed into my circulatory system. So it gets into my blood. And then my blood sort of gets pumped around by my heart, as we mentioned before but eventually gets into my muscles. So the carbon from the broccoli is now in my muscles. My muscles, let's say I go for a run, I play some soccer, I break that down, turn it into carbon dioxide, and then I breathe it out so it gets into my respiratory system. That's a great example of what it means to argue from evidence. Being able to trace the same molecules from your food to your muscles and out through your breath provides evidence that those systems interact. But let's say you're like me from three minutes ago and you want to argue that gut bacteria are an organ in their own right. Well, John's got some evidence for you. There are trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions of bacteria that live inside you. Even if you're totally healthy, you are jam-packed with bacteria. But at least in terms of number, I am not a human being. What? What are, you, what, what are you talking about? So if I just took the bacteria that live in my intestines as a healthy human being, there's probably about 10 times as many bacterial cells in just that little bitty part of my body as I have human cells in my entire body. I'm about 10% human if you just look at number of cells. Whoa. If you look at the number of genes, so if you look at the DNA in that bacteria, it's probably about 100 times as much as my own genes, so I'm only about 1% human that way. <laughs> Wow, so you're basically just a bacteria farm who moves around the world. I'm a tall, speaking culture tube. What's up? And that is about it. <laughs> wow, okay. So now in terms of the digestive system, you no longer think of it as just all these human cells that can do human stuff because there's all those bacteria in there. So like, what are those, why are they there? What's the point? We kind of think of ourselves as very complicated organisms. You know, we, we can think, we can ride bikes, we can listen to music. And a lot of these things are pretty unique, but actually bacteria, because there's so many of them and so many different types, they can do way more stuff. So they can ride bikes and more? They can help you ride bikes for sure. They help you do stuff not only with digestion, so breaking down parts of your food that you can't break down, but also they help you with stuff like they train your immune system, they probably affect your nervous system, and we know that because actually sometimes people have sort of mixed up groups of this bacteria, so the bacteria that most healthy people have, they won't have, or they do something like take antibiotics too many times, that wipes out all the healthy bacteria, or at least a large chunk of them and they get sick from it. Even though antibiotics are usually good and help get rid of bad bacteria, they also kill the good ones. You've convinced me, first of all, that good. I, Tom, I am bacteria, right? I'm me, 
and my bacteria. We are, we are me. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm with you there, but that makes me really n never want to take antibiotics. I don't want to hurt these little guys. Like, I'm, I'm a little bit terrified of antibiotics now. That's what a lot of people feel. So there's basically people that feel like they should only take antibiotics all the time, and people say they should never take them. And really, like two a lot of very <laughs> <laughs> interesting positions. Yeah, yeah, and really, the the truth is probably that they're good in certain situations. So antibiotics definitely help with certain types of infections. They've helped extend people's lives. So they help people live longer in a lot of situations. And infections from stuff like bacteria do kill millions of people. So antibiotics are not pure evil. If you take them inappropriately, you're gonna wipe out the bacteria that are actually keeping you healthy, even though you don't need to do that. So I'm really curious about, let's say you have to take antibiotics because mm -hmm. you're sick with something, whatever, and you wipe out all your buddies, like, mm -hmm. Where, how do you repopulate yourself with those good bacteria? In most cases, the bacteria that are normally there will come back in just a few days. So, Just because I'm like touching dirty microbial infested things? Touching stuff. Also, just sort of the fact that you don't wipe out all your bacteria. So if you take antibiotics, you're not getting rid of everything. You still have some that are still there okay. and they can sort of like you know, repopulate. We've also found that basically no matter how clean you think you are, you're kind of surrounded by bacteria all the time, including bacteria that came from stuff like your poop or from other people's poop. And while it seems kind of gross, those are actually where most of the bacteria in our intestines come from. So this reminds me of this whole world of probiotics. My mom's really interested in it, but she's kind of confused because there's, it's not obvious what things she should be eating if she wants to like get all the good bacteria. So probiotics are when people consume living bacteria that are supposed to be healthy for them. It's kind of, it's a field that's definitely going in the right direction, but there still needs to be a lot of research done so we understand exactly what's going on. I mean, a lot of times people get these healthy bacteria from probiotics from things like yogurt. Yo. Or kimchi. Chi. Foods that have bacteria growing them naturally. And the problem comes from the fact that we don't know exactly if these bacteria are always doing something good for us or if they're doing anything at all. A lot of the bacteria from probiotics, you can eat them, they can get through your intestines, but they don't stick around long enough to actually do anything beneficial. So one of the things that probiotics is trying to get better at is figuring out how to get good bacteria that are actually doing something to stick around so they can actually help the humans be healthier. Are there any situations where you could actually like cure more severe diseases with the right bacteria? One treatment that actually has been pretty successful is called a fecal transplant. A uh, what transplant? A uh, fecal transplant, a transplant of feces or poop. Great, how do, you, how do you do that, John? So usually what happens is that someone with certain diseases like inflammatory bowel disease or certain types of infections uh, will come into the doctor with someone they live with who's healthy. The, the healthy person will poop into something, usually a container, something pretty clean, blend it up, and then it gets put into the stomach or the intestines of the healthy per of the via unhealthy their person. Via their mouth? Via a feeding tube. So usually, okay. you don't, at least That's... nowadays, you don't just drink it. Whew. But it can either go into your intestines through sort of the mouth or through the anus, putting the bacteria in the intestines where they're supposed to be. So hopefully, it's basically transferring the healthy bacteria from the healthy person to the intestine of the unhealthy person. And that, that works? That helps them? It actually is super successful. So some people have recovery in a couple of days. And this is from diseases where they haven't been able to find a treatment at all that's ever worked for them. Let's review the evidence. Your gut bacteria help you digest food that your body can't break down. If you remove bacteria, you get sick. When you replace them, you get better. So if tissues are collections of cells that do the same function, and organs are collections of tissues that work together, you could argue they should be their own dang organ. I rest my case. You're kind of a big deal, John. Keep doing what you're doing. Doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me here today. Oh, no problem, it was and, awesome. Um, uh, if you ever want to grab a poop smoothie sometime, I won't be there with you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> if you want to see more of John, you can click on some of our bonus features. That includes a conversation about the hygiene hypothesis, science vision, and reading Framebow. Without further ado, here's the music video. Meet Jerry. He loves cookies and milk, but he's lactose intolerant. Have a cookie, Jerry.
So many systems, never to digest them. Think they don't win a whack, that's a misconception. This group of sales, this group of sales, they work together when they do it so well. This group of sales, this group of sales in a tissue, in an organ, in a system. Tissues, we're talking about tissues. The sales come together and they figure out the issues. Making up the organs, fluid flow, and valves pushing on open. I know you already know it, but your heart is just part of a system cardiovascular. A system in a system, and just so you don't miss them, interacting with the brain, kidneys, lungs, skin, muscles, and my God, drink some milk, drink it fast, even though I digest it in my mouth and my stomach, lactose is gonna test me from a stomach to intestine, first small and large, a bunch of E. coli will rest and now they're in charge, take the sugar and they're making CO2, make some gas bubbles, make them all say you gut bacteria, oh so important, you could argue they could be the wrong dang on Chop, they chop, we chop that food down. That gut bacteria, chop that food down. I chop, they chop, we chop that food down. E. coli in the system, go and chop that food down. down. This group of sales, this group of sales, they work together when they do it so well. This group of sales, this group of sales in a tissue, in an organ, in a system. As usual, it's up to you to write verse two. For full instructions, click on the music video link over there or go to sciencetom.com. Trying to get those subscriber numbers up, so go ahead and click on Stephen Jay Gould's face and subscribe. Leave a comment with any questions you have for John. Throw a party for your gut microbiome by eating a bunch of fiber. And remember, if you stay bored, you may be boring. See you next time. This group of sales, this group of sales, they work together when they do it so well. This group of sales, this group of sales in a tissue, in an organ, in a system. Fake, 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 they don't win a whack. Fake, they don't win a whack. That's a misconception.